Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. Let's close out our section on SAP UI5 by looking at an example of uh, an SAP UI5 Fiori application that both consumes OData v4, but also performs a create operation. So this uh, user interface is going to look very similar to the one that we did in OData v2. It will allow us to compare the differences in the OData model because uh, this is where um, the API itself for the model diverges quite a bit between OData v2 and OData v4. But it will also allow us to finally go back and test our exits that we coded in pure node for our OData uh, v4 CDS based services. So let's return to the web IDE. And if you remember, we had in our services, if we look at our My Service CDS, uh, we of course have the user service, but in our server JS in the bootstrap, when we loaded CDS, we told it with lib handlers, that's where our exit handlers are going to be contained. And inside our exit handlers, we created, um, we have create exit handlers for the user, um, both um, uh, before uh, on create and before update. We have not really got a chance to test those yet. We could have tested them in Postman like we did our XSO data service. We decided to wait until we have a user interface and we're finally to that point. We're ready to create a user interface uh, for uh, for our OData v2. So let's... Um, Let's come here. I've prepared the complete user interface. I think we've seen enough typing of SAP UI5 parts and pieces. Let's just go ahead and, um, and import the whole thing, and then we'll look at the key parts of it. Because as you'll see, most of it is the same as our previous examples. Uh, we'll focus in on the few parts that are uniquely different. So bring that OData CRUD down. We'll come down to our web module resources and we'll import that do a crud v4 let's go ahead and import that so let's look here at what we imported, our index HTML, largely the same as what we had before. In fact, I cut and pasted the same. I've still got the uh, CSS uh, style sheets in here for the batch, even though we're not going to use that. Um, my component JS, same as well. Nothing new really going on there. Manifest JSON. If we look at the manifest JSON. Of course, now we define our data source, our user service. The only difference here is we tell it that it is OData version 4. And if we come down to the models, um, we have a user model pointing to our user services as data source. It is OData v4, as we see here. We're not going to preload. And a couple of the settings that I chose here, synchronous uh, synchronization mode none, uh, operation mode server, so to do um, sorting and filtering on the server side, and auto expand selects true. Okay, um, so in a parent child relationship, it expand the um, it automatically send the dollar sign expands in. If we want to look at our view, one of the major changes that we have here, I still have my input fields. First name, last name, email, same buttons to call the service, do the update. Nothing's really changed there, except I had to take the uh, um, the original smart table that we're using in the OData v2 example. The smart table does not yet support binding to OData v4 model objects. So I just had to change this to the M table. It doesn't have quite as much functionality, but it can be bound to the OData v2 service. Um, you know, hopefully in another couple months, once I've got a version of SAP UI5 that's updated, supports um, binding the smart table to the OData v2 
or to the OData v4 model. I'll, I'll change this back because I certainly like the, all the functionality the smart table gives us. Um, but for now, uh, we'll, we'll go with the plain uh, M table. Then if we look at the controller, this is where most of our logic was originally uh, to call the service. You'll see the, um, the create operation pretty similar, except in the original create, maybe let's get these side by side so you can you see them here. In the original create, we built a JSON object and then we called a function of the OData model called create. We had to tell it which entity and then we passed it the data. It's actually, I think, simpler now um, because what we do is we create a binding to the, uh, to the OData model. So we don't have to worry about building our own JSON. Uh, we can, we can create, directly create a binding and it's through the binding um, that it is going to send the data back to the server. So it's a bit more consistent. You know, when we were doing the update in, in the, uh, in the OData v2 model, there wasn't a dot update that we sent. We, we just said submit changes and it took the binding and automatically sent it to the server. Um, whereas to create, we had to call a specific create command. Here, we're just being more consistent that everything goes through the bindings. Um, and we can attach event handlers so we can say, you know, when it was created, then send a, send a message. If there's an error, um, then, then message that as well. Um, but uh, a more consistent approach, I think. Now, on the, um, on the user update, we still use the binding. Uh, once again, and we have the same submit changes. So, so really, uh, updating is no different. It's only creating that has a little different uh, uh, approach to it. So, really, you know, if we had support for the smart table, we pretty much could have taken our OData v2 UI, really only changed this one um, this one event handler. Uh, for the adjustments, the OData v4 model, and it would have worked out of the box uh, with with really no no changes, no other changes. But we, we did have to adjust for the uh, for the smart table, as I said, kind of as a temporary thing until we get support added there. So let's change our run configurations now and point to our new application. So let's say save and run. And it should look very similar. Um, so we can create a new record here. Test before, before, test before at sap.com. I will call the create. We see that our user 18 was created. We see it is reflected in the table. Now this table is, is a little different. Uh, like I said, it doesn't have the automatic sorter that the smart table had on it. So actually our new record shows up here at the top, but it has been inserted into the, uh, into the database as well. And we can verify this if we go back to the logs and we look at the service log and uh, go into the details of it. Scroll all the way to the bottom of the log. What we'll see is that it did call our uh, service, actually made a batch request to, to our service. We see our exit uh, handler being, uh, we had some console logs in our exit handler before user create, we see the data being logged out. Um, so, so we know we passed through our Node.js exit handler. Um, and uh, really we have, uh, uh, we now have a more modern application using OData v4. Uh, so you see that we're still a bit in this transition phase, but it isn't going to be that big a difference. Basically, we're just waiting on core parts of the UI5 framework, particularly the, the Fiori templates and the Fiori UI elements be updated to v4. And then it should be a, a really pretty easy transition to switch from XSO data with its OData v2 support to the more modern CDNS approach with its uh, Node.js OData v4 approach.